Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below with your own question, and I may just answer it in my next video. Now, today's question comes from my comments. If you've seen any of the previous videos that I've done recently, all about async, await, and task, you'll see that a common question is, well, Brian, this is all great. I love async, await, I love task. I know all about configure, await, and how to report progress and all this great stuff. But uh, how do I cancel it? Well, the answer to this is it really depends. There are multiple ways to cancel a process in an application. Uh, there are many ways to cancel a task and the way you cancel a task really depends on the implementation of that task. Uh, what I mean by that is maybe you have a long running process that's going through some type of recursive loop uh, and you're gonna pull the property and pull for cancellation or maybe you're gonna handle some type of callback. Maybe the API you're using doesn't accept a token, uh, but you still need to cancel the task so you can use a callback to do that. Or maybe you're gonna use the wait handle, right? I mean, what I'm trying to say are there are multiple ways to cancel a task depending on what you're doing. So in this video, I thought that I would build on a previous video in which we showed reporting progress and we were looping through a whole bunch of numbers, right? So we're gonna use the polling approach today to cancel a long running task. So enough of this diddle daddle talking chit chat. Let's go ahead and get into the code. Roll that intro. The application we'll be working with today is the same application that we used in our video that showed how to report progress to our end users for a long running task. As you can see, we have a button click event handler in which we are running a long running process called loop through numbers. This loop through numbers simply loops through numbers and then reports the percent complete of that process to our end user. And we set the progress bar and text block to that percent value. Let's go ahead and run the application and see how it functions. Here's the application running. As you can see, we click the loop through numbers button and the process kicks off in which we report the progress of this process. What we want to do is we want to modify this application to implement this cancel button. The expectation is when I click the cancel button, no matter where we are in the process of the loop through numbers function, we will cancel the task and prevent it from running any further. So let's go ahead and implement that now. The first step to canceling a task is to create what's called a cancellation token source. So we'll create a cancellation token source. We'll call this token source. And for now, we will set it to null. In our button click event, what we want to do is we want to create an instance of our token source. A cancellation token source is simply an object that creates a cancellation token, and it's also used to issue the request for cancellation. So what we want to do is we actually want to grab the token that the token source has created for us. So we'll say token source dot token. The token is essentially a value type that's passed into one or more listeners. This is normally done through a method parameter, meaning we have to pass this token into our loop through methods where the cancellation will occur. So let's add a method parameter to our method here, which is of type cancellation token. And let's make sure we pass in the token to our method. We monitor the value of the is cancellation requested property by polling. So what I mean by that is let's say if the token dot is cancellation requested, we know that the request to cancel this task has been invoked. This is where, for example, we would do some type of cleanup code, and then we have some options on how we handle the cancellation of this task. Now it's called polling because as we loop through this method, we are continuously checking the is cancellation request property. So we are polling that property each time through each loop. Once we discover that this task has been requested to be canceled, we have some decisions to make to decide how we're going to actually handle the cancellation. One option may be to just throw an exception. Uh, maybe you just return. Maybe we just say, you know what? We're just gonna return out of this, right? And just break clean. Uh, another option may be you're dealing with results and you wanna return a modified result. Well, in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw an exception. The recommended way to throw an exception is actually to use the token that throw if cancellation requested. So what this means is when we come up to our task to handle this cancellation, what we want to do is we want to wrap this into a try catch block. Now the type of exception that we're going to catch is what's called an operation canceled exception. And in here we will handle that exception. In this case, we'll say the text block dot text equals canceled. Now one more very important tip that I want to make sure you know about 
is we always want to dispose of the token source. So let's add a finally block. And in here, we're going to say token source dot dispose. And finally, we have to actually invoke the cancellation. This is probably the easiest part. We're simply going to go to our cancel button click event and we're going to say token source dot cancel. Let's go ahead and run our application and see what happens. Here's the application running. We're going to click the loop through numbers button. We can see that we are looping through our numbers and I'm going to click our cancel button and we have an exception, which is great because that means that through this loop, we have pulled the is cancellation request property. It is true. We're going to do some cleanup code here. And after that cleanup code, we threw the exception. So now we're going to continue through this and we can see that we have properly handled that exception. And now we have updated the UI and said canceled and our progress bar has been stopped at the point of cancellation. And that's it. That's how easy it is to cancel a task using polling of the is cancellation requested property on a token.